Welcome back guys. We're back with the MTD yard man riding mower. And in this video we're going to be covering the starting system. Okay, first thing, uh, some of the issues you may have is you put your key in the ignition switch, you turn the key, you hear nothing. Or you may hear clicks. Or maybe the starter motor is turning over, but it's turning over very slowly. So we're going to go cover some of these uh, issues here and maybe maybe can help you out with your own mower. Also these here techniques you can also apply them to your car or to your truck. Okay before we get started I want to give a shout out to Vince Fischelli. I'm going to use some of his techniques. What makes his uh, book a little bit interesting is that batteries for example they're tested usually with a carbon pile load tester here and with this here techniques we're going to be using we're going to be using an amp clamp, and we're also going to use a voltmeter. And from that, we should be able to tell the condition of the battery. Uh, we're going to be looking over voltage drops. We're going to also, uh, whatever else we can come up and think of, you know. So uh, let's get started. Let's don't waste any more time. Okay, so if you have some of those issues like that, uh, you want the first thing to do is you want to check your battery. That's the heart of the system. So let's, uh, let's take a look at the battery here. Okay, the first test we're going to do in the battery is called an open circuit test. We're going to check the open circuit voltage of the battery. So you want to put your leads onto the posts of the battery. Let's see if I can get on there. Okay. Let me turn the voltmeter on. If you notice my voltage is 12.98 volts. An ideal voltage for a battery is 12.66 volts. That's 100% charged up, okay? Mine, I had the battery charger on last night, and um, if, you, if you have a, been charging your battery, your voltage actually be running a little bit higher, so like mine. If I let this thing sit for a few more hours, it will actually stabilize. It'll come on down to 12.66. But if you got a little bit higher voltage, you know, it's, it's not a big deal. If you have a voltage, say, from 12.7 to 12.80, then that's going to be considered surface charge. Basically, it's the same kind of thing, you know, where you're going to have a little bit of a charging issue here. But if your voltage is a little high, we're still good to go. Now, what happens if you don't have this here voltage? What if your voltage is a lot lower than 12.66 volts? So let's take a look at uh, Vince's book here, and we'll go to a table he's got, which shows the open circuit voltage versus the state of charge. Okay, and I'm just going to lay that down there. And by the way, um, I contacted Vince here and I want to be sure that it was okay to use his book. You know, I do recommend the book. It's good reading. I read a lot of books in engineering, you know, and I've, uh, it's easy reading. It's good for the beginners. If you're new to electrical, you want to learn more about your starting system, charging system, reading diagrams, uh, it's, a, it's a good book to read and I do highly recommend it. Okay, and uh, anyway, well, I contacted him to get permission because you don't want to use somebody else's work and it's, uh, it's just professional courtesy. So, you know, he put the blessing on it. He was okay, so I want to thank you on that, Vince. Okay, as I already mentioned, 12.66 volts is ideal. That's going to be 100%. If you have a voltage like up here in the range up here, that's the surface charge. Mine is slightly higher because of I've, you know, been recharging the battery overnight just to, so we can do these tests here. Uh, also, if you notice it, the voltages will drop down, and as it does, if you have some of these voltages in this range in here, this is actually going to tell you the state of charge of your battery. If you get down to 11.89 volts, then your your battery is pretty much dead. You got zero percent uh, state of charge. So if you do read a low voltage here, first thing you want to do is get your battery charged up, get it back up to at least 12.66 volts. And uh, the dash line here that Vince has, 12.45, his recommendation, if you get your battery voltage gets that low, or if you get lower, then highly do recommend get, it to, uh, get your battery charged, because otherwise you could damage your cell plates inside of your battery. Okay, so let's, uh, oh, and one other thing here. This here values, they look pretty pretty linear to me. So what I did is I took and I actually plotted this out in Excel. So I plotted that in Excel. 
So what you see in the red there is the is the actual data with it along with the data points. And you can see that uh, here's a black line is representing a linear graph. And as you can see that the data points are actually pretty much right on that black line, except for this one right here, which is kind of interesting, which is that 12.45 volts that I mentioned earlier, that if you get to that voltage or lower, then you want to recharge your battery before you do any of this here testing. You notice that one is just a little bit off the line. But for the most part, you can see that all the data points are on the are linear. So as your battery voltage drops, then your state of charge will drop linearly along with it. Okay, that 12.66 volts or a little bit higher, what is that actually telling us? Well, that tells us, well, as I mentioned, you got 100% state of charge of your battery. Now, what it's telling us is that the sulfuric acid is in solution. It's not, it's not, it's not reacted with the cell plates because as your battery discharges, your sulfuric acid, is, uh, the molecules and ions, going to react with the cell plates. So your percentage content of your sulfuric acid as the battery is discharging is going to be lower. So we have 100% pretty much of all the sulfuric acid in solution, which is a good thing. So now this battery should be able to put out the current. But that we do not know. The other thing that we do know is that each one of the cells, which is six of them, is contributing 2.11 volts. If you take that, multiplies times six, that's where you get your 12.66 volts. So now, this part of the test looks good. Now, we're going to put a load on the battery. That's going to be using a starter motor. So what we want to do is we want the maximum amount of load that this here battery, I mean this here starter is going to contribute. So we can, for you guys, now I'm, I'm going to do it a little bit different, but for you guys probably not going to have the, uh, the features that I'm using on this here amp clamp and also maybe on this here voltmeter. I have a min max and I have an inrush feature on this amp clamp. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the starter over for about three seconds and then I can come back and analyze the data. For you guys, then you'll probably want to bump the starter two or three times to maximize that amount of current to put the maximum amount of load on the battery so that we can get this here battery voltage to drop to the lowest that it's going to, that it's going to go. So let's continue on. Let's get going with the test. All right, I'm going to be using a Fluke 374 True RMS clamp meter. So what I'm going to do, we're going to set it up for DC amps. I'm going to zero the meter. I'm going to set it for inrush. Now you notice it goes to all dash lines. It's basically it's sitting there waiting for the amount of current to come in there and it's going to actually measure the highest inrush current. The inrush current is when you very, very first put turns, turn the key over to the start position. The current is coming into the armature, but at that very instant the armature is not turning. So you're going to get the most, the maximum amount of current. That's called the inrush current. Once the armature starts turning, then it's going to generate a counter electromotive force from the magnetic field because it's rotating and this magnetic field is cutting across the permanent magnets and then the current will come down. But I want the max. I'm going to compare the max amount of current that the starter is drawing versus against what the battery voltage is going to be doing over here. So I have my amp probe. If you look right down in there, you can see there's an arrow. The arrow is set up for conventional current flow. And to make it easy, I just take a, all my amp clamps, I just put an arrow on there. So positive current is coming down, right? So I want to put it in just like, just like that. And this must make sure everything looks good. Yep. So I'm going to clamp it. Now he's done. All right. Now we're going to go back to this here voltmeter and we're going to set the min max on it. So now we have the amp clamp set to look at the inrush current of the starter. And we also, we have the, we have the voltmeter set for min max. Make sure we got our meter leads good. Okay. And then we're gonna crank over the starter. For me, I'm gonna just crank it over. All right, let's take a look at our, see what our voltage is here. All right, we see our max was 12.81 volts. And we see that it fell down to 10.54 volts, okay? Now what we're looking at is what's the lowest voltage that it drops, in my case, 10.54 volts. Now let's compare that to the inrush current from the amp clamp. All right, let's take a look at our amp clamp. And let's just see what kind of amps we got. 
So our inrush uh, amperage that's on the on the amp clamp, we got 271.3 amps. So we pulled out 271.3 amps out of this here battery, and the battery fell down to 10.54 volts. So that is good. All right. What you're looking for is you're looking for a voltage of no less than 10 volts. If your voltage got down to 10 volts and you also had a high amperage up like this here, and this is, I'm going to say, is normal because I'm not having any issues, then you can consider yourself uh, lucky and that you have a good battery. Okay, all right, so now let's say that we, you're suspecting maybe that you're losing voltage out to your starter. Well, what we can do now is we'll start a voltage drop testing. We can, we can uh, well, maybe we ought to say what that is first for, for the guys that don't know. Okay, voltage drop is measuring across a wire, across terminals, across uh, contacts, across switches. It doesn't matter. Anything that the current is going to pass through, that's the key. You have to have current. If you don't have current, then you're not going to have a voltage drop. Okay, so we can actually measure the voltage that's dropped across cables, wires, terminals, as I mentioned, battery posts. And I'm going to give you an example here where we can measure, they say, uh, maybe I'm suspecting that this here negative cable that's going out. Let's say, well, I'm, maybe there's too much voltage. I'm losing voltage. I've got corrosion. All right, so here's how we can do that. All right, let's do some of this here voltage drop that I was talking about. Let's say, for example, if I, what kind of condition is the battery post, maybe the negative, uh, to the terminal or to the cable that it's connected to? So what we'll do here, let me show you an example. I'm going to take my black lead, I'm going to connect it to the post itself. And I'm going to connect the other lead, the red lead here, and I'm going to connect it to right there on the terminal. Okay. Now, let me get a good connection there. Okay. If you look right here, you can see that I'm on the battery post. You can see there's a terminal. So we're going to be checking the connection in between the terminal and the post. And also, there, we'll be checking the wire that's inside the terminal. Okay. So we're going to be checking all of this right here. The closer to zero volts, the better. Okay. So just so let's see what we got. Now, for you guys, you, if you don't have a min-max feature, let me just flip it around for you. If you don't have a min-max feature, uh, you're just going to have to sit there and see what your lowest voltage is. So I'm going to set the min-max on here, and we're going to turn, and I found that uh, you don't, um, if you bump the starter, you're going to get the maximum current, but over the years I kind of found out that all I, you just have to do is whip the starter over. Okay, that should be good enough. Okay, you can see that I've got 0.04 volts. So, 0.04 volts, uh, yep, there's max volts. So that looks really, really good. Okay, so now let's just say that I want to go from, and I want to check the whole entire cable. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the terminal. And I'm going to hook it right to the terminal. And I'm going to go and take the other end, and I'm going to hook up over here. And let me just lay this thing flat down, because i got to cover, close the seat, so. Okay. And I'm going to put the meter right up there so you guys can see it. Now, here's where the other end of this cable goes. It goes to right here. It's mounted to the frame. And I'm just going to hook it right on to the terminals, on the terminal itself. Looks pretty good. Let's set the min max on here. Let's uh, whip the starter over. Looks like we had a pretty high there, about 0.5. Mm -hmm. Oh, 0.68. Now, this right here, that's too high. That's too high. Now, you may be asking, what is it? What's the normal voltage here? Well, if I went from all the way from the battery and I went all the way out here to the DC, uh, to the ground out here where the starter is at, probably 0 0.1, 0 0.2 volts is probably the max. Uh, if we're on the positive side, 
from the positive side of the battery out here to the uh, where the positive terminal is connected to the starter then probably maybe 0.3 to 0.6 volts but what I do is I just look at point a half a volt half a volt for the positive half a volt for the negative it's just a guideline if you got something that's really off you're gonna find you will know it if you got corrosion that's built up okay so right here we can see that that is that is pretty high because we probably shouldn't be no more than maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.05 volts across this little mm. short cable right here. Alright, so I know I've cleaned up the frame, I've cleaned the terminals up, I've cleaned the battery post up, so there's only one thing that's left. That means I have corrosion built up in the wire where the terminals are crimped. So in this case, if you've cleaned everything up, cleaned the terminals, uh, cleaned the frame, then in that case, what you need to do is just go ahead and replace the wire, place the terminals, because that's the only thing left. Okay, now let's just say, for example, I want to go across the whole entire negative side of this circuit. In other words, what I mentioned earlier was that we're going to look at the complete voltage drop. So now I've got my terminal, my, my lead out here on the terminal. I've already checked from here on the post to there, so we know that looks good. So I'm going to take my other lead, and I'm going to connect him out here to, oh, let's see where we can find us a good ground. Um, I'm going to hook it up to one of the fins up here on this here cylinder block. Doesn't matter, I think that'll be a good ground for us. And this is also, you can see that the starter is over here. So that should be a good place right there. All right, so now I'm just going to reset the min max. I'm going to do it again. And then let's repeat it. Now we have, say, 0.7 volts across here, so I'm looking at maybe 0.1.2, so maybe 0.9 point, or maybe close to 1 volt, which is really getting up there, which is too high. But let's just see what we got. Looks like we saw 0 0.9 and, yeah, 0.93 volts. Okay, so I had 0.7 volts dropped across this here short cable, and the other 0.2 volts is from the frame the where it bolts to, goes through the steel, goes through the frame, comes up through the engine block where it's mounted to the frame, and then from there it gets to uh, grounded, the starter motor is grounded through the engine block. Okay, so there's 0.2 volts. Yeah, that's probably a little bit too high just through the frame. Uh, so what could you do maybe to uh, help on that? Maybe even take a cable and run from right here to where it's mounted on the frame and run it all the way out here directly to the engine block. In this way, if you look right down here, look down here at the engine frame. You see the engine frame is actually painted. My guess is that these guys never even cleaned this thing, you know. So instead of bolting the engine and cleaning up and getting this down to bare metal, I think what I would do is just run a whole new cable out there, okay. Uh, copper conducts a lot better than steel, although there is, the steel here is a lot more, it's a lot more massive, okay. Okay, let's take another look. So what do I need right now? I need a little cable right here for the DC negative on the battery. Okay, and let's, let's say we want to look at the positive side of the circuit, okay? All right, so I'm going to take the positive lead of the, the voltmeter, and I'm going to hook him up, and I'm going to hook him up to... Now, if you really want to be good, let's take a look and see what we got between the battery posts and we'll just duplicate the test. And we're going to take the other lead and we're going to hook him on to the terminal right there. Okay, so now we're going to check, see if there's any kind of corrosion between this here padded, positive battery post and that terminal. Okay, reset the meter, go for me and Max, whip it over. Okay, and what do we got? We got 0.03 volts. Okay, that's 30 millivolts. That's good. I'm happy with that. So it knows we, we know we don't have any corrosion built up on the, on the battery terminal and the post here. So now, let's take and let's move this all the way out. And my, and my, my battery, my terminal, my test lead positive is connected to the terminal right here on the positive uh, positive of the battery here, okay? I'm going to take the other lead and I'm just going to hook it out here to the starter. Okay. Another Remax, clear it out, okay? 
All right, let's whip it over. Let's see what kind of voltage drop we have across that. Okay, 0.63 volts. That looks a little bit high too. Okay. Let me do this test one more time just to confirm that we got a good connection. Okay. And let's try it again. Point 0.8 volts. And that's too high. That's even that's even worse than what we had before. All right, just trying a little different connections here just to ensure that we have got a good connection before we say that we have an issue with this here cable. All right, let's do it again. There we go, got, uh, looks like 0.07. All right, try it one more time. 0.49 volts, I'd say that's uh, probably it. That's getting a little bit too high. So, how can we narrow that down? All right, well let's take, we know this is over the entire positive side of the circuit. All right, I'm gonna keep that over here as far as my positive lead of the voltmeter. And let's go to right here. This is the other end of the cable off the battery. And maybe I'll just get it right on there. Okay. Got it just hooked up on the stud of the solenoid. That battery cable goes back to the battery positive. Okay, let's try this test again. Let's see what we've got. Let me do my min max. There we go. We got 0.37 volts, okay? That's too high. So, I need another cable right here because I know I've cleaned all this up. If you cleaned everything up and your voltages don't come down, then you need another cable. So that's two cables that I need. All right, so I do have another cable that's going on the other stud of the solenoid that's going out to the starter motor. So let's take a look at that one. So I'm gonna hook up on this side over here. So I'm gonna hook up right there. Hopefully that'll give us a good connection. And I'm gonna go out to the starter motor terminal out here. Okay. So I'm going to hook there. So now we're just looking at that cable right there, going from here out here to the starter motor. Clear out the min max, start it over, do another, whip another starter. Looks like we had about 0.5 volts. Yep, we had about 0.5 volts there. So it looks like we need to replace both of those cables. So basically all three cables, they have uh, corrosion in there built up. And uh, I know that the terminals are all being cleaned. So there you go. So that's a, give you a little bit of lesson in voltage drop. All right guys, what I'm gonna do on this test is I, I, really, I wanna see, more or less for my own reference too, is I wanna see how much this here starter motor is gonna pull while it's actually normally pulling over, you know, turning over a few turns here. So, you know, we looked at the inrush current, so now I just wanna look at the normal current while the starter is actually turning over. So that's what we're gonna be looking at right here, okay? Okay, it looked to me like there's probably about uh, about 100 amps there, right? All right, one more last shot, and we're going to call this the one. All right, so for you guys out there, that looked to me about 100 amps. All right, so it looks to me like 100 amps while the starter is turning over is a good rule of thumb, at least for this here particular mower. This is a 20 and a half horsepower. It's got two cylinders, Briggs and Stratton. Uh, and if you're monitoring your voltage and let's say that you've got some issues where it's dragging, it's slow, or maybe you don't hear anything, so basically you should be seeing that kind of current. You should be seeing about 100 amps, okay? And let's say that you're doing this and you've got uh, 50 amps, okay? You see about 50 amps and you'll notice that your voltage is not dropping down as much. Well, the more current that comes out of your battery because the internal series resistance is inside, then your, the more current that comes out, the lower that voltage will be. That's normal. But you're not looking forward to get down to under 10 volts. Look at 10 volts as being your very minimum. 
and this is actually under a normal load that we're pushing out to the starter, which we just said was like 100 amps. Okay, so if you got like say 50 amps, what does that mean? That means you got some kind of resistance out there. You got a, you got a cables, the corrosion. That's where you're going to come back with your voltage drop testing, just as I mentioned earlier. So you can start doing that. Uh, if you want to, you just go through, clean up all your connections. Okay. Uh, before you do, maybe you could do your voltage drop testing, then clean them, then come back, compare, see what you got. A lot of this stuff out here is basically, you know, you're sitting outside, the small oil's outside, it's in the weather, you know terminals are going to rust, things are going, going to corrode. So a lot of your issues you can actually fix by just cleaning up the terminals, you know. So, you know, by the time you do the testing and this and that and, and going to all these different points and documenting and writing down, probably just as fast, just go through the stuff and clean it. Especially if you see terminals that are rusty right there, you know, it's like go ahead and clean it up and then you can try it out. And then if it doesn't work then, then you can start doing your drop, uh, voltage drop testing. All right, we just talked about, like say, if you had low uh, amperage going out to, uh, coming out of your battery, okay? So basically you've got too much resistance out there. Or, you know, this is provided that you do have your battery, you know, you know your battery's in good shape, okay? Now, the other issue is that you can have too much current. What if you have too much current? Well, if you have too much current, you're running a starter and, you know, you got uh, maybe 200, 250 amps. Basically, you know it's too much current going out there. Well, you got an issue. It's one of two things. Either you have a bad starter motor or you have too much load on the starter. Could be like a starter drive issue or maybe you have an internal engine problem. So if you suspect me, you could even have the engines uh, locked up. So you might want to get out of here. You know, you can get up here and start turning your, you know, your flywheel to be sure your engine is not locked. In that case, you're going to get the maximum amount of current that's going to come out to this here starter. So it's going to be pretty high. So anyway, that's just, that's another thing I can think of. Okay, the other issue, uh, may, now we, we've covered the, we, we covered the cables, you know, we covered the, uh, we covered the battery, we covered the starter motor. So the only thing that's left is the control circuit for the solenoid. So let's take a look at that a little bit. All right, you know, the checking, uh, checking and troubleshooting and diagnosing, you can use a voltmeter, you can use, uh, you can use a test light. You can just about use anything to give you an indication of what kind of voltage you got. But now here's where some things can get you in trouble if you're using your voltmeter. Okay, let's just say that I'm hooking up to the DC negative. I said, and I know that's a good ground, right? And I come over here and I look, I got my 12, in my case, 12.87 volts. Okay, so now, and let me just lay this thing down because I need to shut the seat okay so I'm gonna turn the meter over to you okay okay my ground wire popped off okay now let's just say I'm gonna check this here this here solenoid right here now I want now this is my this is where my 12 volts comes in. Now, if all my interlock switches are closed and I turn the ignition switch, then I should have my 12 points, say 6 volts. Let's just call it a nominal 12 volts. And I'm going to put this in here. Now, this is where you can get yourself in trouble. By me pulling this here lead off, off of that solenoid. That solenoid is serving as my load. But now I've taken the load out. So now, I come back and I'm going to turn the switch to the start position and you look I got 12.88 volts that's pretty much the same that I had at the battery okay the problem with that is there's no load on this circuit okay there's no load at all on this here control circuit so if I had a problem let's say uh, maybe of a little bit of a corrosion somewhere that uh, in this here control circuit maybe through the uh, brake pedal interlock switch or the deck interlock switch or maybe it's uh, connections made somewhere I will never ever pick it up with this and the reason is that this here all of these digital uh, meters they have a very high input impedance uh, most of them out there even this one is a 10 mega ohm input impedance that resistance is very high 
which means it is not going to be placing a load on this circuit. Again, that means very, very little current. So, to check things, you have to have current coming down through a circuit, have a load, so that if any corrosion is anywhere in the circuit, it's going to load this here voltage down. Okay, so the best way is if you're going to check this, make sure that you have your load hooked up. Okay, but see a lot of times like this here, fast on terminal, it's hard to get it in there. So you got to kind of pull this down. You know, you got to make sure, well, I got to have half on and I got to have part of the other terminal exposed to be in there to get to it. So another way that you can do that is you can just use a test light. Okay, so let me get a test light and let me demonstrate that for you. Okay, so well, I mentioned about the test light. Uh, now here's a typical test light, and uh, test lights that I have, I usually li I like to put the amount of voltage of what is rated at for the bulb. This here is 12.6 volts, and this this here bulb is going to draw 220 milliamps. Now let's just say we're going to do the same thing with this here control solenoid, this uh, solenoid out here for the starter motor. So I'm going to use, I'm going to hook it up to the DC negative. Yeah. I don't know why I keep putting that thing straight up when I know I've got to shut the seat here, okay? And but first, before, you want to make sure that your light's going to work, okay? You can see that we got a good mm -hmm. brightness. That's kind of like your reference, right? You know the battery's good. This is your reference point. So basically, this is going to put a load on the circuit. So, remember we was talking about you got to have a load? So the test light's going to be the load. So when I pull this here wire off now, for the control solenoid and then if I go in here and of course you see I don't have anything because I don't have the brake pedal pressed down and I don't have the switch turn so let me press this down brake pedal let's go to the start position and what we're looking at is the indication of the brightness of that light and as you can see that looks pretty good that looks mm -hmm. just about like it did over there on the over there at the battery so right now we know that all of this here control circuit for the brake pedal uh, switch, interlock safety switch, we know the ignition switch contact is good. We also net, know that the deck interlock safety switch is good. No corrosion. So we don't need to go any further. Okay? But some of you might out there be wondering about, well, you know, how can you really tell if you're down in a few tents? Well, remember what I said. When you get corrosion, it's usually going to be it's going to be a drastic change. So you would definitely be able to see the difference in this light here. Okay, we just went over this here control wire for this solenoid. Now you saw when I unplugged this wire, I had this 12.88 volts, I believe it was, pretty much the same voltage that was at the battery. Now, if you get anything out of this whole video, this is what you need to know for sure. Now, let me just show you and I'm going to illustrate something. I've already done this, but just to, just to tie it all together, I have the wire. It's unloaded. Now when I say load, I don't have a load. And when I say load, and if I let this wire on here, then I have to actually turn it to the start position to energize the solenoid to load the circuit down, which means current is coming down this wire. But when I do this and unplug it, and I do my... And I look up there, you see I got this 12.88 volts. Now a lot of you may be out there saying right now, he's, that's fine, I do this all the time, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. You know, I use a voltmeter and it does fine, I get to an open switch and, and it shows me zero volts. Well here's what you got to know about this right now. The only thing that I know for sure about that voltage is that this is not an open wire, it's not an open circuit. I have no idea how much voltage is really on this here wire through this control circuit unless it's loaded, meaning current is coming down through it. Okay, so let me illustrate it. Okay, let's get our test light again. You remember how we had a very bright light there earlier? Well, let's, let's repeat this test. All right, so I'm going to go to start. Now look at my light. Now what's happening? My voltage is very low because I don't have enough voltage there to drive this light to make it burn brightly. So right now, we know there's a problem with this circuit in this control circuit. And we're gonna and, and it could be anywhere, anywhere 
further upstream from this wire, back through the deck interlock switch, back through the safety uh, interlock switch for the brake pedal. It could go all the way back to the battery, right? Now, let's just say we know that this point right here is hot right off the battery. Well, let's just take a look. Let's see what we got there. Well, see, I know right there, this cable is going back to the battery, so I know my problem is further upstream. But this is just an indication, guys, to show you that whenever you're going to check your voltage and you're going to use a voltmeter, always make sure that you got current coming down through the circuit. And in this case, we're using the test light for the load. Okay? Now, you know, this is, uh, you know, a lot of people don't like the test light because, you know, you got to know the brightness, you know, that say, we used it as a reference over here, the battery, we saw how bright it was, and then we go and go and, okay, you know, that looks pretty good. But then if you get down, you'll say, well, if it gets down a little few tenths of a volt, I'm not really sure. When you've got a corrosion problem, the corrosion problem is added resistance in the circuit. The voltage is going to get dropped across this corrosion, or this added resistance, and it's going to take away from the load. So you're going to get less voltage out here to the load. But, let's, uh, you know, for the ones out there that want to see, well, how much voltage is really there. Well, let's uh, demonstrate another tool here from uh, Dan Sullivan. We'll give a shout out to him well, for his tool. It's called a Load Pro. This will actually load the circuit down, and we can actually see what kind of voltage is out here at the load when we uh, load it. Okay, so let me take the two leads out of here. Let's take a test light. Let's get it out. Okay. I'm just going to set them off to the side. And it, this is this is Dan Sullivan's Load Pro. Load Pro. You notice that it's uh, it's got a tip on here. It's got to put a button. This button here, when you want to load the circuit down, you push the button. There's a 25 ohm resistor in here. So at 12.6 volts, let's say from the battery, with a 25 ohm load, and there's no resistance, so added resistance or corrosion in the circuit, this is gonna this is gonna put about a half amp of current coming down through a circuit that you're checking. So for this right here, this should be perfect to illustrate. Okay, so now let me show you this here. One thing I like about it. You know how you have these test leads, these alligator clips, and you take it, and uh, even flukes, you take them and you just slide them on. Next thing you know, the alligator clip is moved, and sometimes the alligator clip inside is it's worked itself off, and then you got a bad connection. What I like about this is you actually you just screw it right on. So when you screw it on, got some nice threads there, and it it won't go anywhere. Now I'm going to hook this up to my ground, my DC negative on the battery. Okay, so now that's going to give us these here two leads off of this here Load Pro instrument. Now we're going to take the black lead, we'll hook it up just like our regular test leads. I'm going to put him in the common jack of the voltmeter. I'm going to put the other one over here. Okay, now I'm going to take and put this in here just like what we did before. Okay. I'm going to go to the start position, take a look up there at the voltmeter. This is the unloaded voltage, exactly just like if we just put the voltmeter on by itself. Now, I'm going to press this button that's going to load the circuit down and then watch the voltmeter. So it dropped down to seven, wow. seven volts. Well, we lost, we lost five volts somewhere. Okay? So, that's just an indication, just guys, to show you that you got to have your circuit loaded if you're going to do any testing, right? Like I said, if you just put a voltmeter on there and it's unloaded, there's no load, the only thing you know is that that wire is not open. If it's got any kind of corrosion in there, you're never going to know it. You're just going to read battery voltage. Okay, now let me show you just kind of what I did here, so you guys might be wondering. If you come around to the back of the mower,
These are all my test leads here. There's a there's the ground for the test light. Who in the world put this crap in here in the battery? So you can see what I did. Is I just took this here two two resistors. They're 150 ohm two watt resistors. I wired them in parallel. Two 150 ohm resistors in parallel. That gives me 75 ohms. So I've added 75 ohms of resistance in this circuit, which will simulate like maybe a bad uh, bad cable, bad terminal, bad uh, battery post, as far as being corrosion on there. So anyway, if you get anything from this video. Make sure your circuit is loaded if you're going to do a voltmeter. Otherwise, you can use a test light, and I found over the years just very small changes in corrosion. In other words, a little bit of resistance. It'll show up. You'll definitely know the difference in the brightness. All right. Now I'm going to show you one other thing. You maybe maybe you, you don't have the uh, the correct voltage going to your control wire solenoid. All right. Um, or maybe there's no voltage at all. So I'm going to point out these here safety interlock switches. Okay, this one that you're seeing right here, it's over here on the left-hand side of the mower. It's right here where the brake pedal is at. You can see the brake pedal, and it is right there. So this is the brake pedal, clutch pedal, safety interlock switch. So we're going to be doing some voltage testing here, or actually we're going to be using a test light. And I'm going to show you where the deck safety interlock switch is located. Where the screwdriver is pointing right now, we're on the right-hand side of the mower. This is the de deck safety interlock switch. Now, I'm going to pull this one out, and then I'm going to pull it on out, and then you'll get a closer look at it. And also, it'll be easier to get down there to get to the terminals, because the connections for this, as you can see, is up underneath. So it's going to be very difficult to try to get up underneath. So I'm going to take this whole switch out, and I'm going to pull it out, and we'll get a closer look at it. And by the way, this here switch is identical to the clutch brake pedal safety interlock switch. Alright, let's go over the control circuit. We're going to look at that and we're going to be using the test light. Now we already tested up here at the battery with the test light so if you wanted to you can, it doesn't matter, you can check here, 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 here. You can just do any starting point. But let's just say for example I know that this here red cable is going to this terminal of the solenoid. Okay, well let's just take a look at that right there. Because you see it's going to go up and go to the fuse. So let's just take a look right here. Okay, so there's that point. You see it's supposed to be hot all the time. Brightness looks pretty good. So we know that looks good right there. Okay, now the next thing that it shows, let me flip the diagram around for you. You could say, well, look at here, we got a 20 amp fuse. All right, so we could go to this fuse, we could see if it's blowed maybe. Maybe you don't have voltage coming up to your uh, solenoid on that control wire. This would be a good thing to check. So, let's go to the fuse. Now the fuse is right here. So, up on the top of the fuse, it's got a little dimple up there where it's got a little piece of metal. If I can find it up here, obviously that's not the right spot. Okay, so there you can see the light. Let's see if I can stabilize this. There's, there's a light, and and there's a light. So we have a light on both sides. We can see that the light looks pretty good, same brightness as it should be, and then we know that we're good there. All right, let's continue on. Okay, so we're going to the ammeter, right? And but the, it's not a direct connection as I mentioned in the previous video on the wiring diagram. This is just two turns of wire. So basically there's nothing there we can do. We come on down, we come on down. Now we go into the ignition switch. Well this is where we can look at other things. Do the easy stuff first. For us to get to the ignition switch we got to pull this here fuel tank out. And if you want to, if you can take a look, if you can look back in there Way down there, see that little silver? Can you see that little silver? Silver something, yeah. Silver can, way back right in there. Well, before we get down to that, I got to pull this out and pull the fuel line off and drain the fuel. Let's see if we can find something a little bit easier. Yeah, good shot. Yep. Okay. All right, so let's take another look. 
So we know that we're going from five to four. We're coming out, we're coming down. Okay, so it looks like we have a brake or clutch and a lock switch. Okay, so we're coming in on the orange wire. Okay, so let's take a look over here. I think we can get to this one here without taking it out. Yep. All right, so there's a there's an orange there's an orange wire. Yep. Now let me get down in there. Let me get my test pro light in there. Okay, and then of course you notice it's not going to do anything until I turn the switch to the start position. All right, so let's turn it, and there you go. So we know right now that the ignition switch is good. Okay, so that's why you don't want to sit here and ripping things out. Go to the next thing because it may be good. So now we're at this point. We're at this point right here. But now we can say, well, what about this point right here? Well, we know we have to hold the brake pedal down for this here switch to be closed. And we're looking for the orange with a black tracer. So let's go back to our switch again. And if you look, find our orange get your light in there yep so there's our orange with a black tracer which is way back over right there hopefully you'll be able to see it okay yeah there you go and I'm gonna see if I can get my get my test light in there let me move my wire so he's on the back side okay so now I'm there okay and now I'm gonna have to press the have to press the brake pedal so I have it down and now I'm going to the start position and that looks good so right now we know that switch is good alright so now we can continue on and now we're going to go over here to the deck switch and the deck switch is exactly like this switch now I'll pull this switch out so let's take a little bit closer look at this switch which both of them are identical okay there is our deck safety interlock switch okay and you can see the there's the terminals for it okay you can see that uh, not really much to it there's a little plunger that changes the state of the contacts inside now for this thing to start this here plunger when you raise the deck all the way up there's a flag on the handle there that will press this here plunger down which will close those switch uh, contacts that we were just looking at for the starting circuit so that will be the normal position for starting also being how this switch is identical to the one for the for the brake pedal over here it's the same exact scenario when you press the brake pedal this plunger will go down and that's going to close those contacts okay so let's go ahead and we'll put this back together Oops. Put him back together. And let's take a closer look and see which wire we're going to be looking at now. Okay, so we can say here that orange and black, we checked it over here, all right, on this end, which was good. Now we should have an orange with a black tracer over here on this switch. Okay, so let's take a look. We find our orange with the black, and there he is, okay. And we put them in. Okay. Now, at this point, it doesn't matter about the plunger. Okay. Trying to hold this thing here. Pressing the brake pedal. And then turning the key to the start position. As you can see, that looks good, too. All right. The next wire coming out, we can see it's an orange with a white tracer. All right. Now, let's go to the orange with a white tracer, which is moved right over here. Okay. So, now... We press the brake pedal, and I'm going to have to press the plunger, remember, for this switch to close. And now i got to be pretty in. i got to hold a lot of stuff here. Okay, so there, brake pedal is mashed, plunger is pressed, going to start, and there we go. And he looks good, okay? Now, at this point right now, if you look at it, you can see that we have an orange white wire which we just tested well that wire will go can all the way up to the solenoid and that's this wire right here that we just looked at 
So we already checked it, but we'll look at it again. Maybe it'll all come together. So, how do we get voltage there? Press the brake pedal. Press the plunger. <laughs> yeah. Press the pedal. Press the plunger for the deck to be all the way up. And turn the key to the start position, and you can see it looks good. Notice the brightness on that, as we talked about earlier, looks good. So you can forget about the control circuit. Everything looks good, okay? Now, if you check this right here, and let's say, you know, you should, you should hear clicking here. In fact, let me do this. Let me put this switch back together, and then I'll take the starter motor, disconnect it, and then this way we can hear this here solenoid clicking with his contacts off and on, which is a normal thing that you should be hearing. All right, now I've got the cable going out to the starter motor. I have it disconnected, so now we can hear this solenoid. This is the normal sound that you should be hearing. But if your starter is trying to engage in everything, you may not never hear it. So let's hear what it sounds like. Okay. Now maybe some of you out there don't know how to use the amp uh, function on your digital volt ohm meter here. All right, let me show you how that works. I want to measure DC amps. Okay, so I look over here. I see the little yellow. I see amps, okay. And I said, okay, that looks like that's where I want to go. But the yellow is what I want, which is DC. If you look up here, it shows that it's AC. So I'm going to hit the shift button. That's yellow, match up to that, to switch that function over. So now I have DC amps. Okay, so now I leave my common right here, my black test lead in my common. I pull him out. I'm not sure how high this will be, maybe one amp, two, two and a half, something like that. I'm not sure. So I don't want to go down to the milliamp or the microamp, so I always start with a higher amps. So I'm going to put it in here first. Okay, now it gives us two leads. Now, your amp, your amp meter is wired in series with the circuit. That means we have to break the circuit. Well, I want to know how much current is coming down this here lead. So I'm going to break them. Hey, look at there. Was that easy? Now that's going to get my two leads here. Now which one goes where? Well, to get your polarity right, this is the most positive point in the circuit. This is my 12 volts. It's positive, right? So I'm going to put my red lead right there. That leaves this lead left. That lead is going to go to my terminal up here that's up on the solenoid. And I'm just going to see if I can just hold it there. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to press the brake pedal. Okay. And now we're going to turn it. And we have, well, two amps. How about that? All right. So that's good. That's a good reference to know if you want to check your solenoid to be sure it looks okay. So two amps is a good number. So one other thing I can think of maybe before we close it out, like on the voltage drop. You know, we're talking about the solenoid here. Well, you know, how, you know, how do we take, how do we check our contacts? Now, whatever you do, don't sit here and energize this and take your leads off and put it, put your old meter on there. That is a useless test. If you do get a reading, the only thing that you can say for sure is your contacts are not open. But if they're if they're burnt, corroded inside or whatever, your own meter is not going to pick that up. Remember, voltage drop testing. We got to push some current through it. So. Let me demonstrate that. Okay, so we're going to go back over here. We're going to set our meter back up to volts DC. I got my leads moved back to where they need to be. And now we're going to take and we're going to get our red lead. We got a black lead. Let me just use some alligator clips here. Well, these two terminals right here is a contact that's inside. Inside is a contact, that plunger that I mentioned in the previous video. Now this is going back to a positive cable on the battery. So this is the most positive point, right? If you want to, if you want to check your polarity and make it right, so your red lead will go there. It really doesn't matter. You'll just get a minus sign. Well, actually what we're looking for is the magnitude of the number. And then your other lead will go back over here on that side. Okay. Now, if you don't have a min-max feature on your meter, you're going, to, you're going to have to sit here and just kind of look at it, okay? So let me take and get this here. Let me get this here starter cable hooked back up so we can get some current pushing down, down through that uh, solenoid contact. So I'm going to get this here. 
Notice I got brass nuts. Okay. Solenoid has brass nuts. That'll lower the conductivity a little more than it would be if they were steel nuts. Okay. Which in turn is going to lower our voltage drop. Okay, so now I got the got my two terminals up. Press it down. Go to me and max. Let's see what we get. I'm just going to kind of whip it over. Let's just kind of see what we got there. Ah, max. Okay, so there we got 0.03 volts. So that's the that's the voltage drop that's across those contacts. That's 30 millivolts. Remember I said the closer to zero the better? Now if I had like a one volt or a volt and a half, two volts or even higher, you know right then that your contact is bad and you need to get another solenoid. So this solenoid contact is in good shape. Now if you guys are fortunate enough to have a scope, you can do the same thing that I did early in the video as far as uh, looking at the starter current draw and looking at this here battery voltage and looking at it and when it drops when you, you know, maximize your current. And you can also do the voltage drops if you want to do that also. Uh, just to show you that, I'm going to do this here, battery draw, uh, battery uh, voltage drop against the starter current draw. Uh, save a little bit of time, I'll just show you the connections. I've got uh, channel uh, A, this is our battery voltage. You see there's a negative, there's a positive. And also, we have an amp clamp. We have an amp clamp right here around the starter cable. This is Pico's. This is uh, goes up to 600 amps. So I've already I've already captured the waveform. All right, let's uh, briefly go over this here trace that we got on the on the scope here. Up here up on the top in the blue trace, that's the battery voltage. Uh, you can see right now where we started off before we turned it. We're running about uh, looks like 12.68 volts. I engaged the starter. You can see that the voltage dropped, went down to maybe, oh, initially looks like 10.35 volts. That's pretty close to what we had, like in um, initially, I believe it was 10.54 volts. And then, as you can see, this hit down here on the bottom, which is in the red trace, this is the current draw of the starter. You can see the high inrush current right up in here. And then you can see that as the starter motor starts to turn, the current drops down. And up here, you can see that the battery voltage slightly rises. Um, another good thing about this is that we're actually looking right here after everything is stabilized. Uh, let me just get a little bit closer view of this. You can see that as it stabilizes, you can see that these here humps, these is the current that's going through these uh, armature windings. So we get a good indication that the starter looks good. We don't see any dropouts as far as in dropping down to zero. Uh, the current is pretty uniform. Uh, this also is a good test for relative compression. We can see that the humps are pretty much lined up across the top. So we know that the compression on the two cylinders are good. Uh, also, uh, another thing that you can take the voltages, the currents, the maximum, the minimum, the DC average, and you can see that I have that all down here in the bottom. For example, you can see that on the battery voltage, we had a maximum of 12.73. The very minimum that it dropped was this here, 9.995 volts. Uh, DC average was 11.99. Uh, the maximum on the current for the uh, starter on the peak, it showed is 411.9. Minimum 61, DC average is 5092, and we could also put a true RMS value for that current. You can see that was around 83 amps. So this was just to show you that's just another method that you can do, use um, instead of having a voltmeter and actually using an amp clamp. You can capture it all in one swoop here. So anyway, I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. Just want to show you the possibilities of uh, what you could do. I have this video on up. This thing has got pretty long as it is, but hopefully there's a lot of information in there that can help you out on uh, not just your riding mowers, but also on your cars and also on your trucks. Um, again, I want to give thanks to Vince Michelli for usage of his book. Uh, thanks again, Vince, for permission to use it. Uh, it's got a lot of good stuff in here. We went over batteries, we went on cranking circuits, uh, but I did not go into detail about every single iota of the possibilities that you could have. Uh, Vince goes in a lot of detail about that. I encourage you to get his book, get some good reading. Uh, charging circuits, of course, we never went over there. If, you, if you're weak in reading diagrams, 
He's got some uh, tips in here, little tutorials actually help you on that. So it's not so much about how the system works, about when he goes into that, but he also giving you these troubleshooting techniques. So it's good for, you know, the beginners and also for the professional techs out there. Also, as you notice too, I did a uh, shout out to Dan Sullivan for the usage of his uh, Load Pro. Works good. Uh, I'll put a link in there for you guys and also along with uh, Vince Vichelli. Uh, by the way, he actually did three videos for Motor Age describing some of these here uh, circuits here, these here uh, systems I should say, the batteries, cranking circuits, and the charging circuits. So I'll put a link in there also to that. And also to a link to his website. He's got some other things that you may be interested in. And uh, so anyway, I appreciate you guys watching the video. And you guys take care, and I'll see you in the next one.